Oh, she is an honor student, an excellent uh, student, a stellar basketball player. So why is Aaliyah Perry expelled from the Mount Verde Academy in Florida? Folks, this is an exclusive story. She got into a confrontation with two white students. The white students came at her first. Why are they still there? And she has been suspended. This story uh, has captured the attention of lots of folks. There also is a video of the incident. Yet, why are we not actually seeing that particular video? Joining us right now uh, is uh, Aaliyah. Uh, she joins us right now along with uh, her mother, uh, Angelia Alexander, from Winter Garden, Florida. Glad to have both of you here uh, for this exclusive interview. So, Aaliyah, okay, walk people through exactly what happened to you, when did this happen, what were the circumstances around you being attacked by these two white students? So, it started on a Tuesday and, you know, me and a couple of friends were just sitting around talking in the student center. And let me mind you, it's a bunch, it's packed. It's a bunch of games going on, lots of people talking and stuff. And I, like, I was talking to a kid across the student center. And we were talking about TikTok, yada, yada, yada. And another boy, he's like, why are you going to be so loud? And mind you, the student center is packed with at least 50 kids. So, like, and it's a, it's a free period, like, I could talk however I want to talk. Like, I'm, I'm not, it's not like I was screaming where everybody could hear me, but I was, I was getting his attention. And, you know, he comes over here and he's just like, yo, shut the F up. Why are you, you going to be so loud? There's no reason for you to be all loud and stuff. And, you know, I, I'm just asking, I'm saying, go away. Just go away. I'm not talking to you. Don't interfere. I'm not talking to you. Go, go about your business. That's and, and that, now, now, you said this is on a Tuesday, uh, but again, what, what, what month was it? What month? It was this month, March. Got it. Okay, so so it's very recent. Uh, what took place? Go ahead. Yes, and so he he comes over and you know he's just telling me shut up, be quiet. Nobody's like, why do you have to be so loud? I'm like, nobody's talking to you. You can go about your business. And then you know a girl that was sitting at the table with them, she I guess I don't know what made her get in her feelings. I don't know what made her upset because literally nothing that I did had anything to do with her. And then she starts calling me B-words, N-words, all this, this and that. And so I get up and I go to her. I'm like, yo, what's the problem? And she's like, why the F do you have to be so loud? And let me remind you, when I walked up to her, I gave her arm's distance to where, you know, we could have a conversation. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. And she steps in some, like, she steps in my space. Like, her head is on my chin. Like, that's how close she was. And so I'm like, back up. And... Like, they, they, they make it seem like I pushed her. Like, I pushed her aggressively. I was like, no, she was in my space. Her head was touching my chin. I said, back up. And so then as I, like, turn to my friend, I'm, 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 like, walking towards my friend. She comes and she pushes me on my side. So then I automatically turn. I turn and I, pu I push her back. Then both both of those pushes, like, her push and my push were both aggressive. Not aggressive for any fall though and he was to fall hit her heads none of that like no one fell no one no punches no nothing later i was called to the office where i sat there you know i had to give my story and then i was later told to go home well before i well i was i was told to go get my father and he came and then you know one of the phones was brought in and you know when the deans came into the office and was like because there's four deans and when the deans came into the other dean's office and was like Hey, I need to see that phone on there. And as I was exiting, I was like, if this is yada yada's phone, it has everything you need to see. Come back the next day for the video, it's white, it's gone. Apparently she, does, she doesn't have it, nobody has it. Even though it was shared on social media, nobody has it now. And she also received hours for having that video. So who, who knows? So on Wednesday, I come and I have to go to a discipline committee after like at 12 o'clock. And so I'm sitting there, you know, I, I asked for a snack. I asked one of the deans for a snack and he tells me no. Like he just, like if I did not ask one of the other colored deans for food, this man wouldn't have let me eat the whole day. So I then went to the colored dean and I asked, can I please get a, a snack or something? I have my own money, I can buy it. And she let me go and I came back. Then later I went to the DC committee that day and you know before I got there my coach was telling me she was like when you go in here just own up to what you did like tell them that it none of this would have happened if you even walked up there me I'm a kid you know I'm, I'm trusting my coach that's my coach you know I'm thinking she has all attentions for me 
Like she wants me to be here. So I go in there, I'm sitting down and I'm, I'm telling them it's my fault that, you know, I could have resolved the issue by not going over there. You know, I could have just walked away after she even pushed me, I could have walked away. In that, in the meeting, the lady said, are you sure that girl pushed you? And I'm like, I'm positive the girl pushed me because why would I push her if she didn't put her hands on me? And then we left. She said, okay, we'll watch the video. I said, okay. Then we left and my coach was like, I don't like the way she said that. It made it seem like you were lying. And I was like, coach, I'm, I'm not lying. Like, I have nothing to lie about. She pushed me, so I pushed her back. And then coach was like, I believe, you You know, she's on, I'm thinking my coach is on my side. So time she's going to fight for me, at my back. Next day goes on. You know, again, I, I finished the rest of that day off. I go, I, then I was told by the one of the other deans that I was going to have hours, suspension and hours, because I was already serving in school suspension. So he said that I would definitely have some hours I would have to work off, and then I would be probably suspended for another two more days, you know, some more days. That's what I told my consequence was. Expulsion was never on the table. So then I come the next day, and I had bought me a sandwich from the student center that morning. I went to the office. I was like, hey, to the same dean that didn't let me eat yesterday, I have a snack yesterday. I said, hey, um, where do you want me to sit today? And he's like, what did I tell you about having food in the academic building? And I was like, sir, I haven't ate it. He just said, give you snacks. I said, my hand just threw it in the trash can, threw my food in the trash can. So I hadn't ate that entire morning. Then later I was called into the head of the school's office. And I was in there for about like two, three hours. And they were asking me questions. And well, like he started off with the video, then he started asking me a bunch of questions. And then one of the, um, she's like a counselor sort of, and she was like, well, you know, Leah's going through a lot and I talked to her about maybe getting counseling or whatever. And I was like, he was like, well, why does she need counseling? And then I explained to him that my grandma had recently passed. And then he asked me, what schools have you went to? I told him I went to Orangewood and Foundation Academy. He said, those are very faith-based. I said, yes, sir. Then he tells me, well, you know, in life, when you grow up, you're realizing reality. No one gives a S. He, like, and I mind y'all, like, I have no parent, no coach, and I know nobody else in there. It's just five adults asking me questions for three hours straight. And then he he says, so what does this girl say to you that makes you want to go? So at, so at any point, at any point, did they call you, Angelia? Did they call uh, Aaliyah? Did they call your father? Did they call... So, why are they having conversations with you about this and you as a parent, you're not involved in any way in, in these conversations? Right. Um, we, I never got a call. Um, when it first happened, my daughter, she what she did was she, you know, she hit me a text. She said, Mom, I'm in trouble. So as a mom, I'm like, oh, my God, what happened? So she was like, um, I pushed a girl. So I'm like, okay. So then I had to call the school and say, hey, listen, let me see this video of my child pushing another child because she's not, she doesn't, she's not aggressive like that. I mean, I teach her to stand her ground, but not to start things. So when I go into the office, I see the video and all I see is my daughter sitting down and she get up and just whoop, run and push, push the kid. I'm like, well, the video is skipping. And he's like, oh, well, you know, we've been having IT issues. So I'm like, well, if the video is skipping, that's not accurate. We, we can't go off that video. So, um, that was it. No call. No email. The only email I got was a Friday of um, spring break, 3.30 p.m., saying, we have expelled your child. And it's not up for an appeal. Um, my, my daughter, she's a National Honor Society student, all right? She's never been in an aggressive issue. Yeah, she's had cell phone, you know, not wearing uniform. That's just normal stuff kids get into. But when you tell me that... My daughter tried to hurt somebody and you put it in an email and then you expel her and then you think I supposed to go withdraw her out your school to transfer these records to another school? That's gonna follow her. So no, we're not doing that. So yeah, no one told me anything. And so that's why we hear that. We hear because my baby needs justice. It's, this is not right. When you got teachers that are calling me, telling me things, can vouch, it's not right. It's time people stand up for this school. And can I can I say something real quickly? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so you know the main the main thing that I wanted at first was you know to be allowed to finish this year in person, 
and go to Geico, like, because I play basketball. I'm, I'm one of the point guards on the team. So, so what is your so what is your classification at the school? You are a sophomore. I'm a sophomore. You're a sophomore. Okay, so yeah. so this is your second year at the academy. Right. Okay, gotcha. Uh, and uh, we're described as this this is an exclusive academy. How many black students are there? Like, 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 well, like, what's the black population of this academy? How many students overall at this school? The, the, like, there's a, there's a bunch of students in general. Yeah, what I'm black. saying is that this academy with a thousand students, two thousand students. Like, how large is the school? Yeah, it's about, it's about, about two thousand, about 2,000 kids. And, and how many black kids go to the school? Um, most, some of our international students. Um, and then, um, then you have most of the black kids are athletes. Yeah, they Got play it. sports. Got it. Okay, so so they make this. Decision. I'm sorry, so Aaliyah, you want to go ahead and make a point? Go ahead. Oh yeah. So like at, at first, I wanted to do this to you know go to school because she still gets to go to school even though she put her hands on me as well. And you know I wanted to play basketball because you know I play on a national team and we're about to head to Geico. But like I don't, I don't like if I don't even want to be. I don't want to play Geico because I feel like my coach just wasn't there for me. Like that that hurts. Like, my coach wasn't there for me the entire time. That's crazy. So, so, so what, what I'm trying to understand is how do they arrive at the point of expelling her and there's no conversation um, w with the parents? So it is, does, does the school have a process when they decide to expel students, do they, I mean, is there some kind of system they have? Is there an appeals process? Or is it simply, they make the decision, that's it, you're out? Um, to be honest, um, I was told that, of course, the parents are supposed to be involved, you know, especially, I've been involved when she got a cell phone issue. They told me about that. Hey, your daughter got in trouble for having a cell phone out. You notify me about that but you don't notify me about my child getting expelled until she gets expelled. You know, even with the coach, you notify me when you have an issue with her, um, maybe her and her teammates going back and forth, but you never reach out to me about, this is big. My child has just gotten expelled. And you call me and tell me you didn't know about the process. She told me, oh, I didn't know about the process. What? How do you not know that one of your point guards are, is about to get expelled? But, the, but last year, there was a student, okay? that got in trouble for bringing a boy into the girls' dorm, all right, because we've been honest, all right, and this student was allowed to finish school online and to return this year to play on the girls' basketball team. But yet, you didn't fight for my child like that. You didn't do that. Why? Because she's not... What is it? That's my... We want to know what was the difference. Um, it, uh, the tuition at this school is, um, for what, $50,000 a year? Uh... Oh. For boarders, um, she's a day student, so we play twenty, like nineteen a year. Uh, this is the statement that they provided to us. Go ahead and pull, pull it up, yes. folks. Um, it is the practice of the academy not to discuss student discipline matters, which they treat confidenti confidentially. They are noting the business of releasing disparaging information about minors. The academy realizes that she is an adolescent girl who is still maturing, learning from her mistakes and impulsive behavior. Therefore, I cannot provide you with greater detail. However, the academy holds students to a high standard, particularly student athletes. As a private school, the rules are strict and the standard is set high. The academy does not tolerate behavior at school that is intimidating, threatening, or abusive. The safety and security of the student community is always a high priority. I can advise you that state I advise you that state several facts which are simply not true. The other student's father is not and has never been employed by the school. No students were told to delete videos. In fact, we are in possession of several student videos. In addition to videos, the school administration also spoke to numerous witnesses who saw the unprovoked attack, which was not defensive in nature. Finally, I would add that a student's entire disciplinary history is always taken into consideration. When disciplinary consequences are determined, to say that she had no prior disciplinary history would also be false. The student's family is pushing a false narrative in an attempt to portray the student in a more sympathetic light. 
We understand that her parents are disappointed with the disciplinary decision, but the academy stands firm in its resolve to hold students accountable and make sure all students feel safe on campus. That is Lori W. Smith, the attorney for Mount Verde Academy. Um, your response to that, and also have you, Angelia, have y'all hired an attorney in this case? Oh, uh, we did. We hired an attorney, and if... If, if that's so true, why are you telling me to get off social media and they will negotiate? We're not negotiating the, the fact that what happened, happened. If my child has to walk away with expulsion, by telling the truth, she just will. But we're not going to go along with the lies to make you guys look good. It's not going to happen. So I asked my daughter, I said, Leah, what do you want to do? Do you want to just negotiate with them at like all this stuff is not true? Or do you want to keep telling the truth and pray that the truth will be the light? My child said, Mom, let's the truth, because this is going to help the next child, the next child, the next child not go through what she went through. So guy goes out the window. We don't care. We care about the truth in this situation. What, is your, wanna... what, is, your ne what is your next step? Um, our next step is we're going to keep protesting until we get this video the full truth of what happened. Um, you're only showing one side and you're telling students not to talk. I mean, like all this is happening. And the sad thing about it is I have parents calling me. I have teachers calling me. All right. Who's telling me your daughter is a hundred percent right. She's not telling the story, but I know she's telling the truth because my child, I teach her to tell the truth, no matter what the consequences are. So we're going to keep fighting. And to be honest, they don't deserve my child to finish school there. You, you know, for what? You, you treat her like she was nothing. Garbage. Like she just, you just threw her away. She used to get up every morning and go to work at that school. Then she went to class. Then she went to practice. She didn't get home till late nights. And this how, is this how you do her? But yet you had, you did have a fight two weeks ago in front of the school. Fist fighting. A fist fight. You had, I got a teacher that's willing to, and you I had a fist fight. I have a message sent by a child, like a kid who was literally witnessing it. And you didn't expel those kids. Right. But we are supposed to be quiet. Y'all just be quiet, you know, shut up. Get me on social media, get us on social media and we'll negotiate. That's not how I go. Cause my child still got to live with this. It's not right. We not, no. So all the threatening about, oh, we're going, they're going to do this and going to press charges. Your child was 18 years old. My child was a sophomore. She's 16. She's a minor. And something else I want to like just add on to this is like in that email, he said, I've had behavior issues. I've gotten in trouble for my cell phone and a polo. Please tell me what behavior issues that is. Hmm. Like what? My polo and a cell phone? You, you have to be kidding me. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to read this message just because I feel like it's important. It plays a big role in this. So this girl, she, she doesn't know me. She's in one of my classes. We never speak to each other. You know, we did a protest earlier this morning. And this, this is the message she's in. She says, hey, I just want to let you know that I support you. What you did today was very impactful. Don't be scared to stand up for yourself. I have been going to, this, to the school for a while, and no one has ever done what you did. Everyone is too scared to speak up and you are very brave. Don't listen to what anyone says. There has been many fights at this school and no one has ever gotten kicked out. So you're a hundred percent correct with this. Everything that has that was on those posters are correct. It's true. It's there. And they can say, oh well, you know, you you're making the academy look bad. No, the racism there. Discrimination is is there. They done hit it for so long. The kids just they quiet. Those kids come to my house every weekend. We talk personally. So it's there, but they're afraid to speak out. But my child gonna speak out because once again, it's gonna save the next child and the next child from going through what she went through. So no, we won't bend. All right. Um, Aaliyah, Angelia, I appreciate both of you uh, joining us uh, to share your story. Certainly keep us abreast uh, what happens uh, next uh, in this case. Thank you. All right, folks, back to our Roadmark Unfiltered video in just one moment.
Hey fam, Patrol Grooming is a black-owned men's grooming company that delivers on this promise every day to men everywhere. Everything we do, every product we make, is designed to help you to present your best self. It's a promise they've kept since 1991 when they first introduced the Bump Patrol brand, the number one men's product for a smooth, bump-free shave and silky skin. Millions of cu uh, customers count on their exceptional skincare products, which can be found at more than 30,000 retail stores in more than 50 countries around the world. Now you can have exceptional beard and skincare products that are as unique as you. Fellas, as we prepare to head back out into the world as COVID restrictions are being lifted, it's time to get our groove back. You can visit patrolgrooming.com to order a patrol grooming box and do this. Use the discount code. Hashtag Roland30. That's hashtag R O L A N D 30 for a 30% discount at the checkout. We appreciate Patrol Grooming being a partner with us here at Roland Martin Unfiltered and the Black Star Folks, Network. Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches. A real uh, revolutionary right now. <laughs> Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roland. Hey, Black. All the momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig?